Okay, everybody, it's eight o'clock my time. So welcome to the engineering update for July. I uh, hope everyone gets, uh, has access to the slides. They should be on the calendar. If not, we'll walk through them. We have two new members since our last update. Uh, on the production side, we have Victor Lopez. And on the CICD team, we have Shinya. And welcome, Victor and Shinya. They already hit the ground running in the first five weeks and done a lot. So uh, welcome aboard. I wanted to go over sort of the engineering OKRs before I get going on some of the summary of what we've done and what we're going to do. Um, the main thing that we're, we're focused on are a couple of items, um, enabling high availability for GitLab.com and for our customers. Um, some of, for GitLab.com specifically, there are two things that we're really working on right now, uh, one of which is graceful degradation in NFS servers. Right now we have something on the order of 12 to 16 NFS servers running on gitlab.com and if any of one of them falls over, gitlab.com is down. So we're trying to avoid that and trying to make sure that at least if one of them goes down, we can still function with the 15 other ones. Um, so that's work ongoing, thanks to Bob. Um, one thing that we identified in, in, in maintaining availability is that our Redis cluster was growing quite big. We were storing lots of cache data, storing a lot of persistent data like sidekick queues and things like that. And one thing, one feedback we got from uh, the Redis author himself who says, look, you guys are using Redis in two different ways. You really need to have two different clusters for this use case. And so thanks to co uh, community contribution from Paul Charlton and review by Pearl Robert, we should have this in 9.5. Um, the, the, the one big area that customers and we are facing today is just performance of GitLab itself. And one of the OKRs is to lower the latency in application. And there are two areas for that we need to focus on the back end. There's obviously a lot of work going on with the Git Elite and Proof File System access, but on the on the more general, higher level stuff, on the database level, there's a lot of optimization we can do, and there is a good list of the ten things we need to optimize. So if you're on the backend team, please take a look, and uh, we can optimize one at a time, and hopefully we'll get a lot of bang out of our buck by doing that. There's a good front end plan that Tim and uh, Jacob Schatz have put together about what our what are we going to do to optimize the perceived performance and also the actual front end performance? And there's a lot of simple stuff like lazy loading of images and uh, getting rid of all this inline JavaScript so you don't block the whole rendering when you go to a page. So that's work ongoing right now. Uh, the other key one that I, I'm particularly sensitive to and our support team as well is the critical stability issues. So for example, uh, we've all seen merge requests getting stuck or fork not working or import not working. We need to get that solid and we need to make sure those things work 100% of the time. Um, and the other OKRs are just making sure the other existing features are used by GitLab.com, things like Service Desk, um, so forth, um, Kubernetes deployment, Canary deployments and all that. And the last one that's really been on my radar is just getting GeoDR off the ground and getting customers using it and working on all the kinks there. So uh, jumping into actually cool stuff that we're, we've been working on, front end and then and the UX team have, have done a great job of, of putting in new navigation for 9.4. And if you haven't seen this yet, uh, it should show up pretty soon now. Uh, it's on dev, it is on staging right now. You can, once this, the RC goes live either today or tomorrow, you should be able to click on the right, uh, upper right side of the, this uh, screen here and, and it says turn on that new nav and you click there and you, you have to, change of preference, but then you get this new navigation. So it looks cool. It's a, a significant improvement to what we had. It, I think it makes, it answers a lot of the criticism we had about the two level navigation. So great work um, by everybody involved here to get this going. Uh, on the platform side, uh, I think Dawi mentioned that we've got to improve audit ev events that showed up in 9.3. This is actual data from gitlab.com. You can see, uh, you can filter now by groups, which you couldn't before, which is great. So that if you have specific uh, groups you want to monitor, you can uh, go to the admin panel and do that. So I think that before you just had one giant list and it wasn't necessarily that helpful. Discussion. This is launching in 9.4. I just played with it yesterday. You can add related issues to an issue. So if you've got one issue that ties to other ones, you can add it to there and it shows up. And it's a pretty cool feature and it's uh, uh, our goal to to match the kind of features that people want in an issue tracker like Jira. This finally landed, I think it got delayed 9.3, so it's uh, pretty exciting. Uh, 
Postgres HA, the build team is working on it and doing some great work there. I know uh, Marin mentioned uh, a bit about this and I kind of wanted to draw the diagram of what is actually going on with Postgres HA. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ian or Jason or um, Marin, but this is the picture that I see. Um, you've got GitLab running on one machine. It's talking to a, a, a database proxy called PG Bouncer. So if some database goes down, PG Bouncer will figure out well, we'll, be, we'll direct traffic uh, either to the master or the secondary. On each of the database nodes, we have this thing called Rep Manager, which is essentially trying to monitor the health of the database, and it will take action if something goes down. Um, so as Martin mentioned his, up, his update, we shipped the PG Bouncer in 9.2. We shipped the actual Rep Manager in 9.3, and uh, the actual config to use Rep Manager is now going to be in 9.4. Uh, I think Ian is still, you guys are still working on figuring out, well, what happens when an actual failover? Do we give Rep Manager access to the PG Bouncer machine to alter the config? That's TBD, but um, that's basically what's happening with Postgres HA. So uh, we'll start, hopefully we'll use this on GitLab.com right now to actually have real database failover. And once we have that, that will enable other customers to do that as well. Edge team, they, this performance bar, I mentioned it in my last update and I wanted to showcase some of, of this because it's a really cool feature that will help both our support team and our development team and our customers as well. Uh, essentially, we, we shipped this in 9.4. The challenge was that we've identified a number of security issues that if you gave everybody access to, they could figure out like the existence of projects and other things. So uh, Remy and did a lot of great work to uh, actually make it possible for you to say, okay, I want this group to have access to this feature. And uh, we've enabled it on staging. So you can enable, you can play with it on staging by going to your account, logging in and typing P and then B. That activates it. If you actually go to a page and scroll down, you can actually see this performance bar and click around. You can, you can click on one of the links, the, the, this PG link here up here actually shows you the SQL database queries that actually happen and it's sorted by longest queries. Uh, actually, it's not sorted actually. It seems wrong there, but I thought it was. Um, but then you can click around and look at the view profiles, and it basically gives you a lot more data about what's is slow. So I think this will really help um, debug a lot of things front and center. So if you notice a page is slow, you can activate this, and you can click on the on the prof the performance bar and see what exactly is taking all the time. Yes, it is activated on dev already. I already took the liberty of doing that. Mm -hmm. Geo, I've been working on this with the team at Douglas and Gabriel. Uh, first order of business is we decided to load up an instance with 1.5 million projects to see where everything would fall over. Uh, the first thing that happened was Postgres fell out of sync even though we were connected. Um, this is a solved problem. Postgres has a thing called replication slots that basically allow you to keep as much data on the primary as you need the, as the secondary needs. So if the secondary gets disconnected for a week, the primary will keep as much data as necessary so that when the secondary data does come up, it can automatically resync. Um, so we've added support for that in 9.4. Uh, we've run into all sorts of read-only issues because the secondary is got a copy of the primary database, but a read-only copy. We have a lot of code in our EE system that tries to update the database when it really can't. So we've, we've addressed a number of issues. There's still a few of them remaining, but the big ones were you had background workers trying to do stuff that it shouldn't have been fixed. And the third thing we saw was that repository syncs were just too slow. If you got 1.5 million projects, you really need to parallelize as much as possible. And the first iteration was just, you know, a, a synchronized one at a time. And um, in 9.4, we're synchronizing multiple repositories at once so you don't have that problem. So we still need to retest this, but it's an improvement over what we had before. Uh, in 9.4, we've done a lot in Geo this past month. Uh, we have this event log that tracks ex some metadata about when people delete projects or rename projects, we need to be able to reflect on the secondary. So we've added a lot of information in the event log that isn't in the audit log, for example, like what the project was before and what it was after so we can actually do stuff and respond to those events. Um, Gabriel implemented the first iteration of the geo log cursor, which basically looks at this event log and goes one by one and tries to do stuff and update uh, which repositories need resynchronizations and which files need to be downloaded and so forth. Um, again, as I mentioned, Douglas did some work on improving the performance of the repository synchronization. Uh, we've added, as I said, mentioned support for replication slots. Um, the big question we've always had is how do we maintain the uh, 
consistency of these author authorized keys. These are the things that actually manage SSH access to Git. And what we've had in GitLab.com is we've done a database lookup. Now, does that work for our enterprise customers who are running CentOS? The challenge is that they need a custom version of an open SSH daemon to do this. And so we've tested this. We've built, written instructions on how you actually build your own version. We may consider shipping out a, a own package to, to, to make it easier for customers. But the first iteration is just document how do you actually do it if you wanted to do it on CentOS. And then the last thing, of course, is a number of customers are trying out Geo already. And so we're um, constantly talking to these customers or prospective customers on what they're running into and getting feedback right away. So it's been a good kind of feedback loop this past month. Concerns need help. Um, this is a great graph that Mike Bartlett put together to analyze how many of our issues are related to new things and how many are, have to do with regressions. The, 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 the blue line is the number of issues we have for each release. The red line is the number of issues related to regressions. And you can see there's a definite uptick. And the, and the yellow line is the percentage of those issues. And you can definitely see there's an uptick uh, from 817, about 10%, 15% of our time to closer to 30, 35%. And we're addressing this by trying to get feedback earlier, doing better reviews and uh, having a better canary deployment process and having people look at uh, staging earlier on and so forth. Um, other concerns, more customers are actually hitting performance issues. Uh, I'm seeing to see a pattern in the last couple of weeks where customers are doing stuff and saying, hey, this is slow. And one common theme seems to be MySQL. Now, whether this is the only problem is not really it's not really clear, but it's definitely one main source of pain, um, and we're addressing this. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and the support team again is getting backlogged because we have a lot more tickets. We lost two members. We're getting more inquiries from prospective customers and and in depth help. Um, the tickets are not as I can't log in. It's you know this my Postgres database isn't working or this uh, setup isn't working. And so they're becoming trickier and they require jumping on a call and doing some really tough debugging. Uh, plans for the next five weeks, as I mentioned, MySQL is becoming a, a, a bigger problem now. Uh, Jen Shin has been doing some great work to figure out how can we provide a really smooth MySQL to Postgres migration process. There's a tool out there called PG Loader he's been playing with and it's promising results there. Um, so, I mean, the main issue is getting the schemas consistent, and that's the hard part about doing this migration. Uh, platform team is doing a lot of work to make sure that EE is the default, so you can download EE, you can install it, you can use all the features, and then if you want to uh, upgrade uh, a, a certain feature, it will be right there in the, in the, in the UI. You can purchase it from the web, the web link and just make the whole process of going from CE to EE much smoother. Uh, Victor Lopez and uh, Nick and Valeri have been working on uh, actually starting the Elasticsearch indexing. It's it started. They ran into a number of issues with uh, sharding and balancing these across different nodes, but it's happening, uh, and they've uh, they're going back and uh, improving that. Um, and with Geo, uh, one big thing we realized is that we really need to get this uh, the rename and deletion case working well at scale, and to do that. Uh, right now, we tie all the repository names to the actual directory name. So for example, the GitLab CE project is named GitLab CE .git on disk. Now, if you rename that from GitLab CE to something else, you've got to also rename it on disk. And, and that can be really a pretty problem if you think about that happening at scale. And, and this is also a problem with GitLab.com. We see that sometimes the file system move fails. So we can simplify this by just saying, look, the disk name can stay the same, but the project name can rename to your heart's content. And so we're uh, working on figuring out what is the right scheme to do that, how are you gonna make sure we have a smooth migration process. And I think the production team will be happy for this feature and we'll be happy on the Geo team for this feature because it will simplify our lives greatly. Um, there's a bunch of other events like the re rename deletion case we need to handle on the, the log cursor. We're working on that now. That's, uh, and then for hiring, we're still hiring. We've actually opened up a number of positions recently. Uh, the back developer position is open. Uh, support engineers from all regions are open. Um, please take a look. If you know somebody who would be a good fit, please uh, have them apply and uh, you know, let us know if they're um, somebody we should talk to right away. Any questions?
Yeah, is that the, the performance bar is at the bottom of the page. I, it was at the top of the page. Uh, I think we had CSS issues, and so I think Remy's looking at that, whether we can move it back to the top. But Do we plan on doing a blog post to let the communication, community know about it? Yes, there's an entire blog post on that. Great. Yeah, and uh, Jim, thanks about MuleSoft. MuleSoft is trying to uh, use our API actually to create projects and uh, create commits directly with the API and they ran a number of performance issues there. And so we've been doing a lot of work there to optimize those. Those, those optimizations won't show up as like the UI uh, performance, but um, it's important for customers because they're trying to use GitLab um, in, a, in a different kind of way. Great. If there are no other questions, thanks for everything, and I'll see you in the team call.